Lord, may, appreci may the appreciation of you just rise up in the room today. May we be thankful for everything you are and everything that you're doing. Just make yourself at home in our praise today, Lord. Find a home with us. We appreciate what you're doing in the earth. We appreciate what you're doing at Ignited Church. And we appreciate what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name. Breaks the power of sin and darkness. Whose love is mighty and so much stronger. The King of Glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder?
today. I don't know about you, but I want to waste it all on Him. Every breath, every breath, may it be praise to you, Jesus. We waste our security on you, Jesus. We pour all our hopes on you all our dreams on you cause only you can do it only you can do it Jesus so we give it all away we let go we let go of our praise we let go of our sound we let go of our oil we let go of our perfume we let it rise to you today we waste it all, I waste it all on you, Jesus, because I found somebody who's worth it. I found someone who's worth it. We found somebody who's worth it. We found someone who's worth it. He has a name, and his name is Jesus. 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 
worth it all. He's worth it when you first came to him. And he's still worth it today. Still worthy of praise when you feel good and when you feel bad. He's still worthy. I want to be like Mary. I want to pour it all on his feet. Waste all of my security. See, religion will always call true worship crazy. Religion will always call true worship a waste. But if you could just get a picture of them, you'll see that nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted because He is our inheritance. Nothing is wasted because He is our inheritance. Oh. oh, yeah. So we'll give it all away, Jesus. Give it all away to you. Come on, just all over the room. Just begin to lift up your voice to the Lord. Give it all away to you, Jesus. Come on, Just pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out to you. Pour it on. Pour it on. Pour it on. Pour it on. We pour it on. Save nothing for ourselves. We pour it on. I don't care what it costs. Because you are better than the cause. You're better than the sacrifice. Sometimes praise is a sacrifice. But he's better than our sacrifice. Come on and taste and see. We want to taste and see. care what anybody else may say. I don't care if somebody else might call this a waste. Coming on Sunday morning, it's not a waste to me. Because you're so worthy. You're so worthy. Come on, just do that for just 30 more seconds. Come on. He's worthy. 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 Everybody agree with that today that our God is worthy to be praised yeah. yeah Lord we just let go of everything Lord and we pour all of our security all of our hopes all of our dreams every prophetic word everything that's ever come forth we pour it all at your feet because you Jesus are better than any word that I've ever got. You, Jesus, are better than any dreams that I have. It is you, Lord. At the end of the day, it's always you. You guys agree with that? You know, what you're doing right now, when you worship Jesus, that resounds through eternity because that stays with him. And, uh, you know, when Mary poured her oil on Jesus' feet, when she poured that perfume on Jesus' feet, you know, uh, there's some translations that refer to that perfume that as a dowry, that that was what she was going to give to her husband. 
And she took her dowry and she poured it all over this man. She gave away all of her security, all of her hopes, all of her dreams for this one man who she just met. And and religion said immediately, that's a waste. Because religion will always call real praise and real worship a waste. A waste of your time and a waste of your effort, a waste of your breath. And worship is never a waste. That's why we give time for it. Because he is worth it. So, Lord, we let go of everything we have. We hold on to nothing because we know that you are so much better. I lean not on my own understanding because my life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own Understanding, cause my life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God, trust. That you make something beautiful out of me. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own understanding. Come on, sing that out.
everything that he stored he will finish everything that he stored all his promises are yes the yes he will finish what you start because every good and perfect thing comes from you so what does that say about your people every good and perfect thing comes from you so what does that say about your people? Give me your ashes. Give me your ashes. And I will make something beautiful out of you. You will give us a soul. Give me all your ashes. Give me all your ashes. Don't be afraid of the shadows. Trust me. You will give you a soul. Give me all your ashes. Give you a soul. Give me all your ashes. You will give you a soul. I'll make something beautiful out of you. We'll give you a song out of your ashes. Yes. Give us a song out of the ashes, Lord. Let something rise from these ashes. There is a river running through this house. It's a river of healing. It's a river of peace. It's a river of love. Love is your life. Love is your lifeline. Love is your lifeline. Jump into the river and dream. 
this house right now. Jump into the river. Jump into the river and receive everything you need. He will restore you. He will restore us. The God of our salvation. God of all hope, give us hope this morning, no more sick hearts, no more sick hearts, Lord, give us hope this morning, Lord, no more hope deferred, no more sick hearts, no more lonely hearts, Trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God. Trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. Just the voices singing out. I give it all to you, God. Trust. Something beautiful out of me. One more time, I'll sing it out. And I give it all to you, God. Trust in that you make something beautiful out of me. Release, release. You know, this morning is. They were singing that song about climbing the mountain with my hands wide open. That means as we approach the mountain of the Lord, <clears throat> we can't be holding on to our stuff. We can't be holding on to even the pain and the burdens that you brought with you today. Come on, just open your hands. Come on, do it right now. Just I'll open my hands. Cast all your cares upon him. As I approach the mountain of the Lord, <clears throat> my hands are wide open. I'm not dragging the past. I'm not dragging the frustrations of the present. I'm not dragging any fears of the future. <laughs> Whoa. I'm going to do something a little different. We always do something a little different around here, don't we? I'm going to ask all of our elders to just come and join me on the platform just kind of make a semi-circle give me a little space here to move but you can kind of mix in with the singers and but all the elders just come up here <clears throat> and um, we're going to pray <clears throat> those of you that need to sit down can sit down those of you can stand, you stand. <clears throat> um, here, Dennis, pass some of those out over there, and here, pass some of those out, Lois, Diana. <clears throat> here, um, Dorothy, you can pass some of those out. <clears throat> I got some good news for you today. God is still on the throne. And prayer changes things. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I've got in my hands a long list. I've got a lot of hurting people in our congregation and friends of the ministry. And we're just asking God to work miracles in these hurting people right now. A couple I want to draw attention to 
Ed is a fellow minister, friend of mine, fighting for his life right now. Cynthia, one of our ministers here, uh, very ill at home, recovering. We're going to pray for her. Linda is a family member of one of our faithful attenders. She's in the hospital right now, needs a miracle. And uh, Rhonda works with our healing rooms. She's with her mother and the last minutes of her life in the hospital. <clears throat> We want to lift these up to the Lord right now. Amen. These are petitions. I want how, how many brought something with you that you just had to cast at Jesus' feet? You brought some. All right. So we want to lift those up to the Lord right now. Just lift your hands wide open. Amen. And elders, team, let's pray over this right now. Father, we just release your anointing into every one of these requests emails that have been sent in from all over the world prayer cards been submitted right here in the house we lift them up to you right now in the precious name of Jesus for those watching on the webcast those that are here in the auditorium in the name of Jesus we release God's healing power delivering power, saving power in every one of these situations in the name of Jesus. And then I want Chloe and her family to come right here. Lou and Marlene, will you come join me right up here? Don Franklin, will you come and join me over here on my left? Don, come over here on my left, would you? Chloe uh, works with show horses. And this has been a dream and a passion of her life to move into this realm. And just through an incredible series of miracles, she's had an opportunity of a lifetime to go and work with one of the top show people in Texas, right? And she leaves in just a few days, and we're going to pray over her. Do you have that picture of Chloe on the horse? I want you to see. She isn't just horsing around. There she is. And uh, she's got her belt buckle on. <clears throat> Even her boots. Got her boots on. But we want to pray over this family. Where's Pastor Jan? Where'd she go? God, what am I going to do with this woman you gave me? <laughs> Jan, I want you to pray over Chloe, and Becky probably needs more prayer than Chloe because she's given up her little, she leaves tomorrow. So pray over this family. Come on, stretch your hands out towards them. Lord, that you are giving her the giftings, the talents, the anointings to do this business, to do this ministry, to shine for the glory of God, to shine for the glory of God on these horses and in these corrals and in these open gates that you've given her. Lord, we thank you that the Lord's name is being lifted on high. We thank you that the Lord's name is in her mouth and it's like a two-edged sword. It's going to bring healing. It's going to bring restoration. It's powerful. It's mighty. Lord, I thank you for those that are coming in contact with her, that they're going to know the Lord as their Savior. I thank you that she lays hands on the sick. They're going to recover. I thank you that revelation is going to come to them as she ministers to them. Lord, I thank you that you would station angels around her, that as she goes in, to these, these uh, gates that she's doing warfare uh, to bring transformation in people's lives, that you would, you would let the angels be her rear guard in Jesus' name. And we just pray over this family. 
that as they are extending their areas of ministry, that, Lord, you would just set peace over them, set provision over them. Thank you that you are there more than enough in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And then Lou and, and Marlene have a tremendous ministry of uh, working with business people. So Lou, Lou, just take 30 seconds. Tell them what Integrity Business is about. Well, Integrity Business Referrals is a group of Christian businessmen and women from, we have now 19 different churches, Pentecostals, Mainline, doesn't really matter. As long as they love the Lord, they're born again, and they're givers. And they operate with integrity. We want them to join us. So we meet every Wednesday, every first and third Wednesday at Fred's Southern Kitchen, good place to meet. And this coming Wednesday, Pastor Strader is going to be our guest speaker. He's going to speak into our lives and encourage us to get out and win the lost and, and, uh, and save the delivered and, and just be a blessing and preach God's, uh, Jesus' uh, <clears throat> message everywhere that we go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Integrity business, in order to be a part of their organization, you have to be an active church member and you have to be a tither. I like that part. Hallelujah. Isn't that yes. something? Yes. And they hold each other accountable. And uh, so if you'd like to be part of that or know somebody who would have a meet us at 7.30 Wednesday morning just to see if I can get out of bed that early, <laughs> if nothing else. So, uh, man, for Fred's market, I'll get up and say, Thank Glory to God. I can just taste those hash browns and biscuits right now. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Um, where's Enrico? Enrico, would you come and pray over integrity business? <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for Lou and Marlene. We thank you for what you're doing, how they're standing up for righteousness, how they're being a light in the business world. Now, Father God, we know they love you. We know they glorify your name. So, Lord, let that fire, let that power that's in them, Lord, just radiate out of them, Lord. Father, let men and women come to know you as Lord and Savior, Lord. Let people be healed just because of them standing on your word. Father, when they walk into the business realm, Lord, and people see them, let them fall on their knees crying out saying, what is it? that I need. I'm missing something. I see the light mm. in this man and in this woman, in this business, Lord. And the light that they have, I don't have and I need it, Lord. And Father, let them cry out to Jesus and be saved. I pray that every business involved would be of integrity. That they will put you first in everything in their life. That they will walk wholly before you, Lord. And Father God, that they will reach the community with the gospel of Jesus Christ as living holy business people, Lord. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, bless them. Oh, hey! Uh, hey! And they're going and they're coming. Use them, Lord. Use them mightily in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Hey. Praise, God. Praise God. Praise God. And then Don, Don and Bonnie have been part of our church for almost 30 years, maybe longer. And uh, Bonnie, his wife, has, has, has been really battling with some infirmities. That's why you, you don't usually see her here. But we're just going to believe God for total victory in her life. She's, she's a survivor and is doing well. And his children were raised in this church. And one of your sons is out at Bethel right now, working with Bill Johnson in the uh, Transformation Center. I'm really excited about that. But Don feels that God has called him to move his whole ministry uh, to Germany. So tell him what's going on, what's happening. <clears throat> <coughs> well, this is not a quick decision. <laughs> you don't make decisions like this overnight. Uh, God's been dealing with me for about five years about 
five nations, England, France, Germany, Japan, and Israel. And this last year it has intensified. So I've been working for a year now on what I'm about to do. And uh, I'm gonna be moving, I'm starting the process to begin the transition into Europe. So this is the beginning of it. And to do that, I've got two or three things that I need to do here, which will require me to move out of here and begin doing some things with different groups. So this is my transitioning moment right here. I will be moving on and starting the process of entering Europe. So that's what we're doing. And uh, I pray for your prayers. I ask you to help us. It's a, it's a daunting task, you know, to move your family to another nation. I don't do it lightly. <laughs> I was listening to the story you just shared with Paul Williams and Tom Venegas. And I was involved with William's life as well. I remember prophesying to him at your father's house about a complete change of authority and a transformation. And within a short time, Paul was transferred out of here and uh, took a 747 for Pat Robertson. He was in charge of it. And the word of the Lord came to him and his life changed. And Venegas is entering Europe and he's not even entering where he thought he was gonna enter. So I don't know what is going to happen. And I'm not gonna make rigid plans and try to hold God to a pattern, but I do have plans made and I am headed, I believe I'm mantled for this, but I'm very flexible about how God and where God is going to place us. So we covet your prayers, and uh, I've had a wonderful time here. I thank you for everything, and I will be seeing you. I'm not leaving, leaving, you know, and I'll always be coming back and checking in and saying hi, so, but I do need to fulfill this calling. I'm uh, in my early 60s. If I don't do it now, it will not happen, <laughs> and I am not going to miss this. I don't want to stand before the Lord and say, I couldn't get there, Lord. I was afraid, or I didn't have the finances, or I didn't know what to do. Sometimes the priest has to hit the river, your foot. And then once you do, the way parts. Come on. So I am stepping out in a measure of faith. I'm not totally going blind, but I am stepping out. So thank you. Praise God. Diana, would you come on up here? Stay up here, Don. This is, a, this is major, this is big. <clears throat> and Don has been a prophet in this house. As a matter of fact, Don and Bonnie were the first ones to recognize the calling of apostle on my life back in the early 90s, before I even knew it. And, uh, and all of the prophetic words that they prophesied in the 90s have come true over my life and our family and in this house. And so, uh, in one way, this is a tremendous loss to us to lose the prophet in the house, but God is raising up new and strong and prophets and apostles, and we still have many even on this stage. And uh, we just thank God for Don, and we want to send him forth in the power of the Holy Ghost. And Diana, you've probably impacted Don, and him impacted you as much as anybody. Would you lay hands on him and the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards him right now. Don's family and our family have been friends for years, so we hate to see them go, but we know it's God. So, so Father, we do, we all just lift Don and his family up to you, and we thank you that he is heeding the call, God, that he, to the best of his ability and to the best of his knowledge, is going to step forth and carry on with what you've called him to do. And we thank you that even the fact that you have given him connections, God, in this that land of Germany and Israel, God, we just know that you are going to continue to lead him. You are going to continue to, to heal the family, to enrich them, and to take them forth to do what you have called them to do. God, you've told us that it would not always be easy, but that you would always be with us in everything that you called us to do. So we just send him forth. We're going to miss him, but we just give you glory for what you're doing and help us all, God, to fulfill the calling that you have placed upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's lift our hands right now. Lord, I just ask you to touch each and every person here today. You've given me a word for our congregation regarding destiny. And we speak 
that the very atmosphere will be charged with destiny and purpose today in Jesus' name. I have a word for Pastor and his wife. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. One will go, but another will come. The anointing remains, saith God, that which has been deposited in this house by the Holy Ghost through this vessel will remain. God does not go. God remains. The word of the Lord remains. The promises of God remain. On the chessboard of the Almighty, pieces are shifted. They go here, they go there as they're needed. But know this, says the Lord. I have not removed the piece from the chessboard. I've simply shifted it to another location. And the Lord says, I can shift it back whenever I choose. So fear not. That which leaves you will multiply. And that which is multiplied will come back, pressed down, shaken together, running over to fill into your house, your life, and your calling. Do not worry about the release of ministries to the nations. They will abound to your benefit in the coming days. I send those ahead of you to prepare a way. For the day will come when you will go. And you will stand in nations. And you will prophesy. 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 The opening of doors. The healing of multitudes and the future of individuals. That which you have beheld, that which you have even coveted, has come upon you, saith the Lord. You've been in a training season of your own in a field that very few will enter because they do not have the strength, the courage, or the endurance to handle it. But I've made you strong, I've made you tough. I've also made you tender and kind when the moment is needed. Know this, saith God, I've sharpened you like steel. I've prepared you for the day of battle. Your finest hour is coming. And many prophets had stood on this platform and even left their residue, says the Lord. And even that residue from heaven, yes, has gathered around you in the very atmosphere. And even the words that they have spoken in this place, yes, are truth. For I've placed within those that have stood here that which is from me. And even as I strengthen you in this hour, says God, yes, you have fought your battles, many battles, but I have been with you. And I, even I, your God, have deposited within this place my spirit. The spirit of the living God reigns in this house, says your God. And even as I draw those in and even as I anoint those to carry my spirit out of these four doors, Yes, I, I am the one who decides who comes and who goes and who speaks a word and who gives that which I've instructed them to give. So take it not even upon yourself in this hour, says your God, but yea, I will deliver even those that you have called upon to be delivered. And those that pass through these doors, I will give them what they need and I will be with them. For I, even your God, am here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord. Praise God. <clears throat> Give them all a big God bless you. Thank you, elders, for... <clears throat> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's pretty strong up here. Give our worship team a big God bless you. Thank you, team. Appreciate them. As we prepare for the morning tithes and offerings, and uh, Deborah, maybe you want to get your things together and get ready to help me here. As you prepare for your morning tithes and offerings, um, many of you really helped me last week 
to do a special gift for the Philippines. As I told you last week, I felt checked in my spirit with some things that were going on that I did not need to go to the Philippines in September. But I'm sending Dr. Horvath, who um, I usually travel with from Chicago, and what I need to do is I need to help him to get there to the Philippines. Normally, we try to give them uh, about $5,000 when we go and do these trips, plus take care of my expenses. So pretty much you took care of the portion of my expenses last week that I will give to him to take and to go. And I just need a, a, a little bit more. So those of you that did not get a chance to give uh, to the Philippines last week, would you just do that today? Take an offering envelope, mark on their missions, and, we're, and just underneath there's a place to put a comment. Just put Philippines there, and I thank you for doing that. Everybody else, thank you for being faithful in your tithes and your offerings. So ushers, would you come and... Uh, Let's receive the morning tithes and offerings, <clears throat> and then uh, Deborah's got some announcements to make, and then we've got a special little surprise for you today. How many like surprises? Praise God. By the way, I want to encourage you to go out to the bookstore, pick up the Michael French series. Uh, we have it ready for you now. And how many enjoyed it, those couple of those new songs that Jordan did this morning? They're on his new album. And his album is out there in the bookstore, and uh, you can get that. Hold your offering in your hand, please. Heavenly Father, we just bless you today. We thank you that you have been so good to this house. Just, you have been awesome to this house. Every bill has been paid. Not one thing's been late. We're not behind. You have done miracles. You've blessed this house to give, at our last calculation, over 17% of our income to missions and to outreach. You've blessed us today as we touch locally with the business uh, network and, and reach out even all the way uh, into the marketplace, into the show horses. And you've blessed us to, to reach out globally with these outreaches to the nations. God, you have blessed this house. And we just say thank you. And now, Lord, I'm asking you to bless this offering. Every person that calls this their church home, every visitor and guest and friend of this ministry that's sowing into the vision of this house, we bless them today. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. God bless you as you give. Miss Deborah? Yeah, that's fine. Well, good morning, Ignited. I trust that you've traded in all your ashes for only the beauty that God can give this morning. He's so great, and you are his beloved. Well, we have some special announcements today. Wednesday, October 28th at 7 p.m., we will have a guest speaker, Frank Butler. And Frank is from Down Under. He's from Sydney, Australia. And at one time, Frank was really into rock and roll. But now he's on the rock that never rolls, Jesus. And his ministry um, is a healing ministry as well as that is an evangelist. He's also an evangelist. So why don't you come on out on the 28th, bring some friends who don't know the Lord, bring anyone who needs healing, and let's watch the Lord move. Sunday, September the 1st at 6 o'clock, we'll have a worship night with BJ and Lisa Sullivan, and we're going to have a video to show that, and they're personal friends of Jordan and Ruthie's. So let's watch the video.
Looks like it's going to be an amazing night of worship. So come on out and worship the Lord. Friday and Saturday, September 27th and the 28th at 7 p.m., Good News Orlando with Ron, Reinhard Bunky. And we're going to have buses going from the church here. It's only $10, which is really a deal. You won't even have to pay for gas or parking when you get to Orlando. You can ride and fellowship together. And if you're interested in going, please sign up out in the lobby so we'll know how many buses are needed. At this time, I'd like all visitors to please raise your hand because we'd like to welcome you here to Ignited Church. Great. We're so glad you came. And the usher has a packet for you. Inside, you'll see a card. If you fill out the back of the card and take it to the bookstore after the service, you'll receive a special gift from us to you. Webcast audience, we're always so glad when you tune in because we consider you part of Ignited Church also. And all the blessings we receive here, we know that you'll receive there too. So anytime you're in the area, please drop by and see us in person. We're so glad to have you. Is there anyone who didn't receive a bulletin for the month of August? Please raise your hand. The ushers have them now so that you can find out more information about Ignited Church and what's going on here. We have a lot of activities and fun things going on for people of all ages. So make sure you get your bulletin. Okay, at this time, I'd like you to stand as we welcome back our pastor. Thank you so much. You may be seated. One facet of our ministry is a culture of honor. <clears throat> One of the lost things in the church is we don't honor our elders like we should. We need to do that. Oftentimes, I even have heard it said in the last month or two that the next great revival is going to come through our youth. Well, I hate to tell you, but Joshua and Caleb were in their 80s. <laughs> yes, God can use everybody. And on this platform, we, we have a, a desire to honor both the new wine and the old wine. There's nothing wrong with old vintage wine. As a matter of fact, the Bible says sometimes the old wine's better. It wasn't talking about that, about the vintage wine. It was talking about trying to put new wine into an old wineskin. You blow it apart. Trying to make us old people act like these young people, you'll blow us apart. <laughs> Amen? If I jumped around like Jordan Deal over here, I would hurt something. I would need a healing. <laughs> We don't, we don't uh, want to dishonor those in, of our elders in this house <clears throat> by just focusing on the youth. We need both. Amen. This has always been and always will be a multi-generational church. So, that's sermon number one, sermon number two coming up. Years ago, back in the day, there was a very famous preacher by the name of C.M. Ward. How many remember C.M. Ward? I would do my imitation of C.M. Ward, but <clears throat> my voice won't let me do that this morning. I'll do it at another time. But he had a radio show called Revival Time that literally went all over the world. People would sit and be mesmerized by his preaching ability. But one of the facets of that radio show 
was the choirs and the soloists. It became world-renowned. And we've had two very special friends <clears throat> that have been involved in revival time. One was Lil Anderson. How many remember Lil would come and sing for us all the time back at First Assembly? Then following Lil on that radio show was a beautiful lady by the name of Gloria Elliott. And Gloria had also come to First Assembly and sang for us and at Carpenters many, many times. And she has been a lifelong friend of the Strader family and of many here in this church have enjoyed her music. And I know you're gonna wanna go out to the product table this morning and pick up some of her music. But Gloria was in town and didn't have any place to go this morning. And so we snatched her up, and I've asked her to do a little mini concert for us this morning. Would you welcome Gloria Elliott? Have fun. Praise the Lord. I was wondering what old person he was talking about. Let's do some music. Praise God for the power of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> young and old. Just go right ahead, maestro, back there at the first song. Thank you, Lord. Enjoyed every moment of the presence of the Lord. It's so great to be here today and see what the Lord is doing here. Great song written by Gary S. Paxton. A little different arrangement, but I love this message. He was there all the time. Time. After time, I went searching for peace in some void. You see, I kept trying to blame all my ills on this old world I was in. surface relationships used me till I was done in. You see, all the while there was someone just begging to free me from sin. Oh yes. And he was there, he was there all the time. I'm so glad to tell you, he was there, oh, he was there all the time. You know what? He was waiting patiently in life. Imagine that he was there all the time. Thank you, Lord. Others may have walked away, but not Jesus. He was waiting right there for you. Never again will I search for some old fake rainbows end you see church now that i have the answer my life it's really started to rhyme he makes sense sharing each new day with jesus <laughs> It's a cup of fresh life. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, what I had missed. He'd been waiting right there all the time. Yes, he did. Oh, he was there. He was there. Oh. Time. Think how long 
he waited for some of you. He was there. Oh, he was there all the time. He was waiting patiently in line. That's what he did. He was there. turned his back on you when you weren't interested he still hung in there he is in fact married to the backslider you went away he came after you Jesus never turned his back on us he was waiting right there waiting right there through the Holy Spirit he drew each of us to him I thank you Lord you were there he was there in my weakness Thank you, Lord. God is so good. Isaiah 43, 1, 2, and 3 says, But now thus saith the Lord, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest in the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. If that doesn't give you security and confidence, you said, that's Old Testament. No joke. Guess what? We're part of spiritual Israel. Hallelujah. God says, Gloria, thou art mine. What does it mean for Yahweh, God of the heavens, Jehovah God today to say, thou art mine. I am so thrilled today that the Lord put his stamp of approval upon my life. I love you and I want you to love me, but if you don't, you're the loser. You know, I finally learned there's a lot worse company than mine. The most important thing is what he has to say about me at the end of every day. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Go right ahead, my brother. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, bring the music way up for me if you would. We're an anchor for those who are hurting. We're a harbor for those who are lost. You know what, church? It's not always easy. <laughs> Bearing Calvary's cross. Sometimes we're ridiculed by those who don't know him. And we're even mocked by those who don't believe. Do you know what I love? Standing up for my Jesus because of all he's already done for me. That's why I am not ashamed of the gospel. Cause it's the gospel of Jesus Christ I, I'm not afraid to be counted Lord, I'm willing to give my life I'm so ready to be all he wants me to be I gave up the wrong for the right. Oh, at 
for me. I'm going to keep right on believing, hallelujah, in the one who's been so faithful to me. And I'll tell you something else. I'm not out to please this old world around me. No, sir, because I've got my mind on eternity. of the gospel. How about you? Because it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, and I, I'm not afraid to be counted. Lord, I'm willing to give my life. I don't know about you, but I've got too much behind me to let this world some people, Jesus is just a name, but to me, he's my everything. I am not ashamed of the gospel. that you reach down your hand for me. Thank you, Lord. I really prayed about today. It's harder to choose two or three songs than to do a whole service because you, when you've required, I've been traveling 42 years. You can't believe it, right? Because I look so young. <laughs> but the truth is, 42 years ago, after the last summer tour with Revival Time Choir, I started out in a borrowed car by faith, and God has never let me down. He has never failed. But he spoke to my heart last night about this song that I'm going to sing, and I put it before him again this morning. I said, Lord, if I'm not supposed to sing it, just have Pastor say, do two. It's that simple. Pastor said, do three. So <laughs> one time in the ministry, someone hurt me very deeply. I know you find that hard to believe, but... Uh, The word says in Galatians 6, 1, if a person's overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one with a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And then it says in the second verse, bear ye one another's burdens, for it is in doing this that you fulfill the law of Christ. I determined, Pastor, that God's counting on me. So I go to Philippians 4, 13, where it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So there, devil. 
Stick your tongue out at the devil. Slap his ugly face and let him know he's not going to have the upper hand. God is counting on us not to sit in the corner and lick our wounds, but to forgive and move on and walk in the freedom and the power and the love that he has for us. You can start it. That's fine, maestro. Song the Lord gave me called, I Know I Can, based on Philippians 4.13. This is for somebody here today. Somebody's walked away just like they did in my life. Somebody that I really believed in, but guess who never walked away? Jesus. The first words he gave me in this song were, when others choose to walk away, Jesus says, I'm here to stay. Hallelujah. You know who this is for today, Lord. And I thank you for taking this message and penetrating the depths of their spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Your precious word belongs to me. You show me what I need to see, and I can make it. Oh, yes, I can make it. When life is hard to understand, you show me. Have a plan and I can make it. Thank you, Jesus. I know I can make it. I say, I know I can. I can walk through dark valleys knowing you are by my side. No matter what day brings in your love I can hide oh I know I know I can make it you know how I know God's word says I can so I know I can I can make it <laughs> thank you Jesus oh when he gave me this song it did such a healing in my heart and life that he would speak this to me. You speak to me and I can hear. You draw me close where there's no fear and I can make it. I know I can make it. These are those first words he gave me. When others choose to walk away my Jesus says I'm here to stay and you can make it just receive that right now you can make it when I heard that I said I know I can I can walk through deep dark valleys because I know the Lord is by my side no matter what the day brings in his love i can hide i know pastor i know i can make it because god's word says i can so i know i can and you can too i can I can walk through those deep, dark valleys because I know my Lord is by my side. No matter what the day brings in His wonderful love, I can hide. Oh, I know. I know I can make it. And I'm going to with God's help. His word says I can, so I know I can. I can make it Don't ever forget When others choose to walk away My Jesus says I'm here to stay
Hallelujah. Come on, give her a Hallelujah. big God bless you. It's beautiful, Gloria. It's beautiful. I want you to go out to the book table and make sure you pick up some of her albums. Brought back some memories when I used to spin your records when I was a DJ on WCIE. How many remember that? <clears throat> and then when I was on KCFO in Tulsa, spinning records. How many of you have never even seen a record? That's what, that's what I... Yeah. <clears throat> Are you ready for God's Word? Open your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. I felt very strongly the Lord gave me a prophetic word for our congregation this morning through a sermon, and it's been amazing. Several points in my message today have come through the worship, the prayers that were prayed, the prophecies given and through the special music that has just ministered to our hearts, it's, it's fun to watch God pull things together. Ezekiel was one of the major prophets of the Old Testament. Ezekiel's assignment was to speak to the children of Israel. And in this story, this is the story of Ezekiel's dry bones vision. How many have ever heard a sermon on the dry bones? <clears throat> well, that represents the nation of Israel. And this open vision that was given to it, uh, Ezekiel was to demonstrate God's love for Israel. And we are right now grafted in, we are seed of Abraham, and we are the spiritual house of Israel, as our guest soloist just said to us and reminded us. And, and I think it's important that you recognize that just as the scripture says that Israel is the apple of God's eye, it would not be an injustice to the scripture for you to understand that you personally and individually are the apple of God's eye. You have the living God inside of you. Know ye not that you are the temple, the very temple of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Covenant, God basically lived in and on a box, not much bigger than this pulpit. But now he has chosen these earthen vessels, these jars of clay, you cracked pots. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, I always knew you were a cracked pot. <laughs> God has chosen us, not much gold wrapped around us, not many mighty, not many noble are chosen. God loves Walmart shoppers. Hallelujah. Loves people from Polk County. Glory to God. He loves people that the world has discarded and said that they're of no use. He loves them. But he does love those of you that are a little prettier or have some special talent. He loves you too, but he loves us ugly ones a little more. <laughs> Let's begin in verse 1. <clears throat> I think they have the scripture on the screen if you want to follow there or on your digital device or if some of you still have a paper Bible, you can watch or read along on that one too. First Verse 1, the Lord took a hold of me. How many want God to take a hold of you today? Take a hold of me, God. 
And I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with dry bones. Matter of fact, let's just pause right there. Lift, lift our hands. Lord, we just ask you to take a hold of us today. By the Holy Spirit, speak to us. Take us on a journey into your very presence to hear your voice clearly. We set aside anything that would distract us or hinder us including our digital devices. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us to focus in and hear your word. Verse 2. The Holy Spirit led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor, and they were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Now, God knows... What is the corporate situation in this house? He knows where we are. He also... Yes, Lord. He knows what your individual condition is. He knows what your family situation is, but he knows what you personally and individually, he knows our condition. He knows your relationship with him, whether it's strong or weak, whether it's hot or cold or lukewarm. He knows about your marriage relationship. He knows about your family, parent-child relationships. He knows the relationships that you have in the marketplace with customers or clients or bosses or co-workers. He knows your condition. And here the prophet made note of the fact that the bones were completely dried up. Their visions, their hopes, their dreams were non-existent. Current responsibilities, burdens, pressures of life, stuff happened. And it can dry out your bones. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Without a vision, people perish. And it's like you can be flourishing in this facet of your life, but in this part of your life, you just feel weary, worn out, frustrated hurt and it's come to a place even of death where you say huh it's impossible there's no way to ever fix that situation verse 3 the Lord asked me son of man can these bones become living people again Notice his answer. O sovereign God, you alone can answer that question. Now, when God asks you a question, he already knows the answer. (laughs) The question, can these bones live again? Israel was a totally dysfunctional nation, scattered all over the world. And many of us here today have a facet of our lives, and even a few here, your total life, is just dysfunctional. It's not working right. You're not experiencing what you need from God. These bones had been dead for a long time. Say, long time. And they didn't just die overnight. It was a long process. It it, it just died over a long period of time. How many are identifying with what we're talking about this morning? The longer we've had to deal with a burden, the longer we've had to deal with that stressful situation... 
the longer we've had to think about the fact that our vision is dead, our dream has died, the more impossible the situation appears to be. What part of your life have you delegated as dead? What facet of your life have you just said, well, I blew it, I can never recover that, it's messed up, it's over, there's no way for God to fix it, it's too far gone, I might as well just move on. Now that sounds spiritual, I just got to move on. And it is accurate, it is a truth, but remember, the Bible is filled with this dynamic tension. Joseph was promised to be a great leader. He never forgot that promise. But at the same time, he's spending most of his life as a slave. He was in prison, in captivity, rejected by his family. You're going to have those dynamic tensions in your life. On one hand, everything's going right. On the other hand, everything's going wrong. And you're going to have that constant tug and pull in some facet of your life. Welcome to your future. All year long, I was so looking forward to our summer because Jan and I had worked it out. We were going to lay low during the summer. We were just going to come to church, but we were going to spend extra time in prayer extra time in the Word. We were going to relax. We had worked out office schedules so we didn't have to be here five days a week. We had it all planned out and not one stinking thing worked. (laughs) Seven deaths in 20 days, either in our family or in the church. I mean, they just messed everything up. And then, oh man, we were so looking forward to it. At the end of the summer, we got two weeks in Orlando. First week in general council, we'll get to see all of our friends. We'll get to see the fine arts competition. We'll get to hear the dynamic speakers. And then the next week, which was last week, Bill Johnson, Randy Clark, Mark Sharona, all the great, Heidi Baker, we're going to, it's going to be glorious. And I got sick the whole stinking time with bronchitis. Lost my voice five days. Spent half the time in bed watching it on internet. Already had paid for the conference and I had to watch it at home. I was too sick to go to the healing meeting. (laughs) Welcome to your future. There will always be things when you've laid it all out. This is what God's going to do. This is where we're going to go. This is how it's going to work. But you cannot allow those bones to get dried out. You've got to keep hope alive. You've got to walk by faith. And you can't walk by sight. But this morning, I'm speaking to those dry bones that perhaps snuck by us. Perhaps we thought that we had already kind of scattered those bones and got them out out of our way. All right, let's get them out of our way. Let's go for whatever's new in front of us. But at the same time, every once in a while, out of the corner of your eye, you glance over and you see those dry bones and you and it's discouraging. It can be defeating and it can rob you of the hope and the dreams of your future. Note, Ezekiel just said, Lord, you know. You know how you want to handle this. He didn't say, well, look at all these dead, dry bones. How could they ever live again? You know, he never even addressed the fact that that the bones were even there. Can these bones live again? Well, Lord... (laughs) Only you know. Most of the time, we delay or derail or destruct our miracle 
because we just talk too much. Well, I'm just saying what's real. I'm just speaking reality here. <laughs> Look at those dry bones today and just say, Lord, you know. Now, I'm going to tell you real quick, some bones he's not going to raise. But there are some bones he desires to raise. And so you have to approach it, Lord, you know. One thing we can learn from this vision is that nothing is impossible. <clears throat> if God says they will live again, they will live again. That, it, it, it's, it's done. God actually finishes a thing before he even starts. He's already declared, these bones will live again. Now, not all the bones all over the world were raised up, but the ones in that valley, in that place, the ones that Ezekiel was shown, he said, these bones will live again. Verse 4, Then the Lord said to me, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of God. So I'm speaking prophetically this morning. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to his voice down inside. This whole entire service this morning, from worship to the special music to the prayers, the prophetic words, and now this sermon, right now, God is speaking. Don't let anything distract you. Don't be worried about the time. Don't be worried about what's going to happen this afternoon. Don't even be thinking about how you feel or how much money you've got in your pocket or the to-do list you've got looming over you. Right now, listen to the voice of the Lord. He will speak to each of us differently today. He'll speak differently. And, and he will speak to our different kinds of situations. There's health issues, there's financial issues, there's relationship issues. All these different issues, he will speak. All I have to do is release the word and it, it'll just fix whatever problem is out there. Whichever bones he chooses to command to live again, they will live again today. <clears throat> Let me try this church over here. Whatever bones, God says, these bones will live again. They will live again. So be listening. I was, I was listening to a sermon last week. Uh, John Paul Jackson. How many remember John Paul Jackson? Uh, dream interpretation, so forth. His parents attended our church for many years. I was listening to him, and it was a good message. It was a good message, and I was just kind of listening to it. I was doctoring myself. I think I was fixing myself some chicken noodle soup because everybody knows if you got a bad cold or bronchitis or something, chicken noodle soup is the best thing for you. At least it makes you feel good. And I was fixing some hot tea and different things, and I was listening. And I'm standing there in the kitchen, and all of a sudden I became aware that the Holy Spirit was touching me. I mean, I mean, he was touching me. I'm just, I was mocking my own business. And he just came into the room. And instantly I knew that what John Paul was talking about, I needed to listen to. So I set my stuff aside and I went over on the couch and I just sat there and, and I'm sitting literally sitting in the presence of God in my room. And it lasted about 20, 30 minutes while I'm listening to that message. And I knew the Holy Spirit was imparting something into me. He was doing something. Now, I want you to be uniquely aware that right now, even under the sound of my voice or what has already happened in this service, when the Holy Spirit touches you, respond. Don't reject it. 
He touches us differently. Some people feel uh, different kinds of feelings. Like how many have ever felt like you just got dipped into a hot tub? Or sometimes you feel little tingles in your body. Or, or just sometimes you have a knowing that God's speaking to you. However God touches you, be alert to that and aware. Verse 5. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. He was telling Ezekiel what to say to the bones. Now, this is very important, so listen. I will put flesh and muscle on you. I will cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Now get a picture of this. You're standing in the middle of a hot, dry, deserted valley. It's a valley of death. It's hot. It's dry. It's a drought. And as far as you can see, dead bones are scattered. You're there with the... The buzzards and vultures have already left. I mean... This is just dead, dry bones. And God tells Ezekiel, I want you to speak to those bones. I want you to prophesy to these bones, and I want you to tell them, you are going to come alive. (laughs) There's nothing more impossible than that. Come on, somebody. It begins, now listen, this is what I felt like the Holy Spirit gave me. I believe this is revelation. I've never heard this before. It all begins with the breath of God filling the atmosphere through the spoken word. Right now, I believe through all that has happened in this service today up to this point in time that this whole entire atmosphere has been filled with the presence of the Lord. Even as I said it, some of you felt that. Now here's a statement. You've heard Bishop Clarice Fluitt make it. I heard Mark Sharona make it again this week. In the kingdom of God, nothing happens without a word. If it wants to happen, it needs to be spoken. God was speaking to the prophet... And in the process of speaking to the prophet, telling the prophet what to say, the very first thing is, is the atmosphere was filled with the voice of God. Our words, what we say, what we declare, has an effect on our atmosphere, good or bad. The atmosphere can determine life or death. Life or death are in the power of the tongue. Life or death can enter into your situation by what comes out of your mouth. Now, how many of it would admit it? occasionally you think of something negative? But it's what comes out of your mouth that defiles you or edifies you. What's coming out of your mouth? Now, Notice, this is a process. It's a progression. God reveals, God shows you, all right, here's the situation. You got a valley, you got dead bones here, dry bones. Then God directs you, he commands you to speak into the situation. Then the bones have to come together as we will see in a moment, then skin has to kind of cover the bones, kind of give them some kind of a form. Then flesh and muscle have to begin to develop within the skin. Then the body stands up, and finally his breath goes into the body. And it comes alive. 
Now note, God never told Ezekiel how long this would take. In the vision, it just took seconds. But the reality is, Ezekiel prophesied, I don't know how many hundreds of years before Christ came, and it's been 2,000 years since Christ was here, and it's only been since 1948 that this prophecy has started to really, truly become fulfilled. This prophecy actually happened thousands of years ago, and you and I are watching it come alive right in front of our face. 1948, Israel became a nation. All their bones started coming together. Egyptian bones and, 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 and African bones and every place where they'd been scattered from Russia, from Germany, from here in the United States. And still, to this day, there's more Jews in the United States than there are in Israel. But their bones are still coming together. They're still, they're still building settlements. That's why the spirit of Islam is so angry because it can see that the dry bones are coming to life. And it's challenging the spirit of Islam. Why do you think that the whole war, everything is all about Jerusalem. Because it's the capital. It's the place of the temple. That's what the war is all about. God never told Ezekiel how long it would take. But in reality, it took thousands of years. Now here's the message. This morning... By the Holy Spirit, I'm speaking into the dry bones. But don't start putting time frames on what's about to happen. For some of you, today's the day of breakthrough. And within 24 hours, your whole life is going to be changed. That's going to happen. There's going to be people that will be healed instantly, even while I'm speaking. There'll be others, the healing begins. For some of you, you're going to walk into work on Monday... And you're going you're gonna to see changes happening. You'll, you'll be making your phone calls, your, your emails, and you'll start seeing changes immediately. For others, it may be seven years from now. But don't let that discourage you. Because oftentimes, the longer it takes for a miracle to develop, the greater the miracle. So just trust the Lord, he's speaking to you right now. Verse 7. So as I spoke the message, just as God told me to do, suddenly, shout suddenly. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise across the valley, and the bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Now, often a revival, uh, an outpouring, uh, uh, a transformation, an awakening, a reformation, they begin with a sound. Now, that sound doesn't necessarily, it's not something you hear with the two paddles on the side of your head. It is not necessarily what you hear with your senses. It's, it's down in your spirit man. As you speak and declare into your situation, listen for the sound. What am I mean? What am I uh, meaning by this? Th there could be some kind of a manifestation. There could be some holy clues. There could be some divine insight, maybe even some divine feelings. Just as I said a moment ago, some of you could actually feel, physically feel the presence of God touching you. And there's others right now in the room that even as I'm speaking, the Holy Spirit is quickening your spirit, man. But to listen means to observe. Just as I was doing during the service today, I observed that as the worship team led us in prophetic songs and in, even in the words they sang and the songs they chose... They were confirming the word that God gave me to speak to you this morning. Gloria, as she sang the special music, the prophecies that came forth on the stage, I was observing 
clues. I was observing manifestations, little, it, it could come through a news report. It can come through a billboard. It can come through a comment that just some nondescript person makes in your presence. But it is something that captures your attention and you go, wait a minute, that was God speaking. What is that rattling? Listen with ears of faith. Observe with eyes of faith, but just trust the Lord. Verse 8, then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed to cover the bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Remember, wait for the process. Remember, it will be a progressive thing. Don't abort the process by trying to analyze what is happening. And don't complain about the way it's happening or how long it's taking. And don't try to speed up the process. Just observe. Don't take another step. Don't say another thing until God directs you. Walk by faith, not by sight. God didn't tell Ezekiel to bring the bones together. He didn't say, all right, now I want you to gather all the bones together. God didn't tell Ezekiel, all right, I want you to put skin on these bones. God didn't tell Ezekiel, all right, I want you to start making those bones do some exercise. They got to have some muscle. God didn't tell Ezekiel to give the bones CPR. Some of you are trying to give your situation CPR. Now, there may be times when God says to do it, but not without a directive. I was walking through uh, the living room yesterday, and Pastor Jan was relaxing on the couch, and she was doing some stuff on the computer and getting caught up on some emails and other things, and she just had some little Hallmark channel in the background, and a little movie was playing, and and I caught it. It was an Italian mother. How many know exactly what I'm talking about when I say an Italian mother who was trying to help her two daughters in their marriage. You already know where I'm going. One son-in-law was just absolutely, totally frustrated with his mother-in-law. And the other son-in-law literally walked out of his marriage because of the meddling mother-in-law. Now, she she loved her daughters. She loved her son-in-laws. She just wanted to help. But sometimes when we try to be God's little helper, we mess things up. Tell your neighbor, I think he's talking to you right now. I'm just, I'm convinced of that. We try strategies that have worked in the past. Or we try to do something that we've heard somebody else tried, and so we try to do that. We try to get advice and counsel, and how many know in the multitude of counselors there's safety, and we should ask for advice and counsel, but you don't take a step until God says, do it. Only do what God says and tells you to do and say. Remember, the Holy Spirit showed the dry bones to Ezekiel, then God told Ezekiel exactly what to say, And when to say it, how to do it. You cannot fix everything. I have people all the time calling me, texting me, emailing me, coming by the church, meeting me after church, saying, Pastor, I got this problem. Can you do this? And you know, my pat answer is in the name of Jesus. Because that's all I can do until the Holy Spirit gives me a specific directive. I just say, In the name of Jesus. Because how many know that? I don't know how to fix everything. Now, I know that you think I know everything. (laughs) And my children tell me I act like I know everything. (laughs) But I don't. I I do fake it till I make it sometimes. But I don't don't know everything. I, I can't fix everything. 
Jesus only did what he saw the Father did, was doing. You know, there were times when Jesus healed everybody that came to him. There were other times when Jesus, when he went to the hospital, the pool of Bethesda, he literally stepped over dozens of sick people and only healed one and walked away. You can only do what the Father tells you to do, either through the Holy Spirit or some other type of directive from God. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he, the weight and the burden of what God had asked him to do is heavy upon him. And he says, God, is there, is there any other way out of this? He agonized for hours. Jesus literally was modeling for us what it's like to be a human being filled with the Holy Spirit, following the voice of the Holy Spirit. Everything Jesus did, we can do. And even greater works we can do. Because now the Holy Spirit is resident in us. But Jesus, you talk about humanity. He was there in that garden. And the Bible says he was sweating so profusely it was like huge drops of blood coming out of him because he was crushed by the weight of what he was about to do. But he finished the prayer with, not my will, but yours be done. It tells us how to handle every dry bone in our life. We look at the dry bone, we speak to the dry bone, we do exactly what God says, but then we just stand back and we say, okay, not my will, but your will be done. Your timing, your way, how you're going to do it, how it's going to look when it comes to life, we don't know. Come on, somebody. Verse 9. Then God said to me, Speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so that they will live again. Notice that God gave Ezekiel a strategy. What was the strategy? In this case, it was to prophesy to the bones and then to prophesy to the four winds to come and breathe on the dead bodies so that they would live again. The Bible indicates that the, the four winds can represent the four corners of the universe, the north, the south, the east, and the west. There's also indication that, that there appears to be some type of a territorial angel in each of those areas that goes and comes right from the very presence of God and literally carries the breath of God in its being. And, and he was commanding those angels to breathe into the situation. He was doing it by the Holy Spirit. Now, the Israelites have been scattered literally all over the globe. And as I said a moment ago, in 1948, they began to come together. That prayer that was prayed did not get answered for thousands of years. Did you know God does not wear a watch? There is no time in his existence. Man has time so that we can function, but God doesn't. And so I don't know how, I don't know when those dry bones in your life are going to live. But again, it could happen today. It could have happened 10 years from now. You heard Don this morning as he was talking about the process he's been going through to make the move to transition to minister in Europe has taken him years. And even to step into the fullness of his role as a prophet has taken years to develop. Sometimes we jump ahead of what God wants us to do and we miss what God wants us to do. Again, we see Ezekiel only does what God tells him to do. Now, even after the dry bones, 
hear the word of the Lord, we still got a problem. You see, just because something comes alive doesn't mean that all the problems are over. Look at this verse. This is an amazing verse. I'd never seen it like this before. Verse 11. Then God said to me, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel, and they are saying, we have become old dry bones, all hope is gone, our nation is finished. Here they were, dead dry bones, and they were still talking. And some of you, your dry bones are talking to you. All hope is gone, we're, it's finished, it's impossible, it will never happen. Even after hearing the prophet of the Lord, they still saw themselves as dead bones. Even after having the rhema word of God leap off the page at you and, and, and grip your heart, you still see yourself as dry bones. Even after God's led you out of Egypt and you've miraculously covered the wilderness and you come up to Jericho, you still see yourself as a grasshopper in the eyes of a giant. And we find out 40 years later that they weren't grasshoppers in the eyes of a giant that all of Jericho had lived in mortal fear of the Israelites for 40 years. And the Israelites unnecessarily so had to die in the wilderness simply because of what was going on between their ears. And here God has a problem. He's, he's got these dry bones. He's prophesied into them. He's breathed his life into them. And they still see themselves as dry bones. Don't leave here today speaking hopelessness or fear or death or loss. Everybody, the weakest believer in the house, can still say, Lord, <laughs> you know whether these bones can live again. Only you know if you can restore this situation. Only you know if you can rescue me out of this, this problem. Only you know how you're going to save this person. or Only you know how you're going to save this ministry or save this business. or Only you know how my family are going to be restored. I trust you. Don't rehearse the pain. Don't rehearse the past. Don't rehearse the disappointment. Declare the victory. Simply state. Lord, you know. I trust you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with the process. I trust you. Is this helping anybody? Now, I'm almost done because I started talking about food a minute ago and I'm getting hungry. Verse 12. Therefore, prophesy to them. Because they still see themselves as dry bones, I want you to prophesy to them. So I'm prophesying to you again right now. This is, this is my first of three conclusions. Prophesy and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Now remember, this is the third time God has spoken to them. Remember? It's the third time. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people. I will open your graves of exile. I will cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And when this happens, O oh my people, you will know that I am God. Now, I, I, could, I could preach a whole sermon just on that scripture, but listen. In 1948, our bones begin to rattle. Why? Because we saw the bones of Israel coming together, and it was a sign, then you will know that I'm the sovereign Lord. And look at everything that has happened in the last hundred years from Azusa Street to the Voice of Healing, all the restoration of the fivefold uh, uh, giftings, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, the, the Jesus movement, the charismatic movement, the worship movement, the, all of the different things that are being restored you can see the hand of God. Did you know right now there's more believers in China than all the rest of the world? More churches. I mean, this is, 
This is amazing, the time we live in. Brazil, almost the entire country is just being blasted by the Holy Ghost. Haiti, the entire country is being blasted by the Holy Ghost. I mean, you and I are living in one of the most exciting, dynamic times. Now, just because our little pocket here or there, it does not appear to be flourishing. All across even America, there are pockets of revivals that are still happening. There are revival fires that you can go and, and get your torch lit again. This house, I believe, has been called to an end-time apostolic center where people can come here like a Holy Ghost space station, dock here for a while, get fed, get restored, get equipped, be challenged, and sent back out again. And here you are sitting right here. Can you hear the bones rattling? God often, listen to this, this is conclusion number two. God often allows something to die and even become impossible so that when it comes alive, it is absolutely without question the hand of God. And no man can glory because God raised it up. Notice what he said in those verses. Put that last verse back up there again. What was it? Verse 12, I think. Put it back up there. Notice how many times he said, I will open. I will bring. When this happens, then you'll know that I'm God. Now, God's not a man that he should lie. If God says it, I believe it, and that settles it. How can God how can God ever restore my situation? How can God ever make this right? How can my dead bones ever live again? Final conclusion, verse 14. I will put my spirit in you. You will live again. And you will return home to your land. Not by your own strength, but by the Spirit of God. God has a land for you. Something just for you. I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. To give you hope and a future. And look at verse 14 one more time at the end then you will know that the Lord has spoken and you will know that I have done what I have said. And then he puts his amen on it. He says, yes, the Lord has spoken. You will know, you will see. Listen, do you hear the rattling of the bones even right now in this house? Something is stirring in you. Just a spark of hope. Could it be that God's heard my cry? The barrenness of my life will become fruitful. That dream will come alive again. That business opportunity that I missed, I'll get another chance. Well, I, I don't know what it's going to look like, how it's going to feel. But it is a done deal. If God says to those bones, they will live again. It is finished. Now, what's our part? Do what he says to do. Only what he says to do. Don't try to make something happen. <clears throat> just ask him every day, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? He may want you to just stand there and watch. He may want you to take a nap and rest. You never know what he's going to have you to do. Amen? <clears throat> yes, the Lord has spoken to you. And my dad just called me and said, you're preaching too long. So, okay, dad, I'll uh, stand up. <clears throat> you thought I was kidding. He did. He just, my dad just called me. Said, you're preaching too long. No, I don't know what he was calling about. But 
Lift your hands like lightning rods up to heaven. God, I give you my dry bones. <clears throat> I give them to you right now. And Lord, you know which ones are going to live again. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my dreams, my hopes, my relationships. I don't know how you're going to restore what the canker worm has eaten. But you've promised to restore. I don't know how you're going to make this thing come alive. But I trust you. I don't know how you're going to bring that son or that daughter home. I don't know how you're going to fix this mess with my marriage. I don't know how you're going to fix this mess with my business or my finances. But God, you know. And I trust you with my life. How many are praying that prayer right now that you trust God with your life? Come on, wave your hands at me. If, you, if, you're, if you're honestly before God, now put your hands down for just a moment. Give me 30 seconds. Is there anybody in this room that says, Preacher, I, I realized during this message that I'm not right with God. And before I can get my bones restored, I have got to make things right with God. I've been going places I shouldn't go, doing things I shouldn't do, saying things I shouldn't say, and I know that I'm out of fellowship with God. Raise your hand real quick. I'm just going to pray for you. Quick, real quick, just so I can see you. Thank you. Hands are going up. Thank you. Just wave at me so I can see you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, let's all pray this prayer. Just present yourself to the Lord right now. Heavenly Father, I present myself to you. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to cleanse me. I ask you to change me. Take the bad stuff out. Put the good stuff in. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray a prayer of dismissal. I'd like for our healing team to come right over here. If you need physical healing, I want you to let them pray for you. Healing team, just get right in place. Um, Lois, would you grab some of your team? Deborah, if you could help her and go over by those steps over there. Any of you that just need some love, you just need somebody to agree with you in prayer, even about what we've talked about this morning, I want you to come to these ladies right over here and let them pray with you. David, why don't you join them right over there? It's good to have David home, our missionary to Haiti. <clears throat> if nothing else, just come up and let David just bless you. He's been... He is so full of the Holy Ghost. Look at that. His hair is standing on end. Glory to God. So, Lord, bless them. Keep them. Make your face shine upon them. In Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to stand right here in front of the pulpit. If you made things right with God today, would you come up and let me just personally pray for you? If you're visiting or a guest or just brand new to our church, you've never had a chance to meet me and I've never met you, please come up and see me. I'd like to see you. God bless you. We love you. And can I just say a special blessing on Pauline Harthorn for being with us today. Her hu husband and longtime friend of our family, Roy, went home to be with the Lord a few weeks ago and it's such a blessing to have you with us today. And Suzanne and her friend are here today. Would you just stretch your hands towards them? Bless the Hartern and the Hen family, Jesus. Bless them. We just want to love on them today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please come up for prayer. We'll see you tonight. Oh, tonight, 6 o'clock, Apostle Georgia Eggie is going to be preaching tonight. Come back tonight at 6 o'clock. Hear what the word of the Lord is.